24 hours, one team. Why doesn't the uh, why doesn't the team more than a meal stand up just real quick? Rather than naming off all the folks. So for those of you who don't remember, it was Stephen Chow's idea. So uh, Stephen. And uh, I'll point out a couple of things that won't come into the presentation, but uh, Michelle Parts did a great job with the logo. So we got logo, we got PowerPoint template already, which is very cool. I forget who helped us do the template. Mike. Uh, Mike. So it uh, worked out really well. So anyway, roll on. So what's more than a meal? So we're going to try and turn altruism into a business model. At the end of the day, you've got uh, we want to be able to make it easier for communities and individuals to coordinate helping somebody in a time of need. Go ahead and roll the next one. So we stole the, <coughs> stole the slide twice, but um, so think about it. If somebody has experienced trauma, so if somebody is sick, extended illness, or something has happened, even, it could even be a, uh, a positive a positive uh, outcome with a baby or something. There's lots of people that want to outpouring of support, and you end up with five meals on one day, no meals on another day, or it might be an opportunity for somebody to come in and help coordinate things like rides and, and things like that. So the idea was that more than a meal will help you coordinate that. If you're a coordinator, it will also help you then come into the site and sign up for different things, and we'll show you a demo here in just a second. So who do we think we're targeting? So community groups, mommy bloggers, churches, charitable organizations, hospitals. These are the folks that would be the starting point for that, to be able to publicize it and sort of push it out, push the idea out. So Kevin, you wanna, Kevin, by the way, did a fabulous job of doing, he pulled in some market research. I'll ask you to speak to the methodology first because I forget, you got over 100 responses. Oh yeah. And then uh, I'll ask him to describe the the outcome of the research as well. So go ahead. Okay. So what we did is uh, we wanted to not just make assumptions about uh, what we thought this market was and what we thought the problems were. We wanted to ask people out there. So we uh, created a, a survey um, that asked them questions that, to retell their experiences, just in little descriptions about when they needed help or when they helped other people. And then to sort of rate uh, a whole bunch of different uh, possible ways to help and possible things that you'd want to communicate back to people giving you things to try to find out where these actual uh, needs are. And uh, we sent it out and big uh, help to a lot of people in the social network to pass those links out, um, including uh, Smaller Indiana, who once they put something out on the first page, we got lots and lots of hits. Um, but we ended up uh, at the end of the day, with, or end of the weekend, with 99 uh, people. So it was a very good sample. Um, 60 of them ended up actually going all the way to the end of the, the survey, which is also pretty good. And so what we did is we took a look at a few things. So what this graph is showing is uh, really this, this idea of um, uh, the needs that are being done at different, different scenarios. So it's not that everybody needs help in the same way. Sometimes it's a very joyful occasion. It's a birth or a wedding. Sometimes it's a very serious one. It's a, a death or a terminal illness. And we wanted to differentiate these things and find out if people are looking for different things and willing to give things in different ways. And so what you get at this end is sort of the average, but you can see in each of these uh, paths, there are different responses to different things. The things that are in red are the ones that we think are, um, that people are telling us are the most important needs. And so those are things that are childcare, spiritual, and home cooked meals. And so this is very, uh, supports the idea that uh, we want to get uh, some type of organization or some type of site that's going to help people coordinate these events. All right, so what this was, was uh, there was a lot of coding involved here. This is taking all the little um, descriptions that people gave us and trying to make sense of them. And so all, when they told us about a tale, I you know, figured out what the topic might be and tried to, to group this together. So the stuff that's in red, I'll explain this a little bit, the stuff that's in red are the things that are the most important, the ones that people talk about the most. And those are things involving uh, empathy, food, and logistics. These are things that people need uh, when they are in a situation where they need help. This is what they uh, are, are asking for. These are what the things that they're given. The inner ring, are the experiences that people were telling us about where they are asking for help. They were in a situation where they needed support of other people. 
the outer ring is what when they were actually giving help to somebody else. And what's important about this particular graph is while in the bigger things you don't see a lot of difference, there are some distinctions. There's on the inner side, the people are asking for information, but people aren't giving it. So these are opportunities that our data is telling us might be something that we could design for to start to facilitate that. Another interesting finding was that, um, actually go to the next slide. So this is looking at the uh, forms of help. Uh, no. That's that's why I got it. Go to the previous one. Yes. Okay, well, it's, it's the same one. There's another one that looks very similar. I guess that's <laughs> different. And one of the distinctions that we found is it's the types of things, the reasons why people are asking for help. Um, and one of the, the the things that we thought uh, we found out was different is that people on the inside there are, there are times that there's going to be abuse, but there's times that there's going to be depression, and people aren't aware of this. But their friends are. Their friends do recognize this. And when they think about the times that they help people, those are the types of things that they were recalling. And so we want to use this research to try to shape the tools that we end up creating to make it a very meaningful thing, to try to bridge some of these gaps that are there just uh, from what people are doing right now.